Hi there, I'm Dave Litton, and a warm welcome to my very short Learn Your Earned Value Formulas in Minutes. Now, the purpose of this video is not to teach you what the Earned Value Method actually is, but rather to focus on the formulas you'll need to know in your exam. And I want to share with you two key techniques. The first is a natural, easy to remember sequence in which you calculate the various formulas involved. And the second key thing I want to share with you is a set of easy memory tricks to make sure that you fully learn all of the earned value formulas and most importantly that you can replicate them with ease during your exam. So let's get stuck in. First up, there are 13 key formulas that you'll need to memorize. And the first metric, if you will, you'll need to understand is how much will your project cost? This is called budgeted at completion or BAC and this is normally given in any question. Next up, it's your plan value or PV. What is our plan spend? No, they're not quite the same. You see, this relates to the whole project, but this refers to your planned value at a point in time. Let's say it's the planned value at the end of a stage or a work package, for example. Any question on earned value will first of all set the scene of the whole project, but then they'll give you a snapshot at a certain point in time and you'll have to base your calculations on that itself. So next up is the earned value itself or EV. And this states clearly, what have we earned so far? Next up, it's your actual cost. How much have we actually spent? Now, the purpose of this slide, by the way, is not for you to memorize it, but to give you an overview of the steps I'm about to introduce. Next up, it's the difference from the planned cost called the cost variance or CV. This is one of two variances. And the second, as you might imagine, is the schedule variance or SV. And this lays down what is the difference from the planned schedule. Next, it's the first of two performance indices, this being the cost performance index or CPI. And this calculates how much you are getting for every dollar or whatever monetary units you're using. The second performance index is the Schedule Performance Index, or SPI. And this is how much are we progressing compared to the schedule plan. Next up is the Estimate at Completion. And this says clearly how much will it cost based on the current cost and schedule. This, therefore, is one of the first forecasts. Next, the Estimate to Completion, another forecast, ETC. And this is how much will we spend from this moment or point onwards within this particular project. Then we're on to the variance at completion or VAC and this calculates the difference between the original budget and what will now be spent. Then we're on to the first of two cumulative numbers and this is called cumulative CPI and this factors in the performance efficiency over many time periods. I'll explain why that makes good sense shortly. And then the final one is a bit of a mouthful and it's called the Two Complete Performance Index, TCPIC. And this refers to the level of performance to be achieved on the remaining work in order to meet the cost or schedule goals. So now onto the formula. The first thing you'd want to do when you get into the exam room is to grab a sheet of paper and to just scribble down quickly your three main metrics here. I've shown there's actual cost at the top, plan cost in the middle, and earned value at the bottom. Don't worry, the only importance of this is to give you a quick understanding of the variances. And for those of you that are still unsure about what earned value actually is, do check out on YouTube my Learn PMP Earn Value in 10 Minutes Flat video. But for now, I'll assume you understand the purpose and approach. So let's go back to focusing on the formulas. Most important rule, you must always start with what you've got. What does that mean? Well, when you're looking at the ratios and the differences between these three key metrics, always start with earned value. That's your frame of reference. Hold on to that because it will make absolute sense then of calculating the other two. You see, the difference between earned value and the actual cost will give you your cost variance. And in case it isn't obvious, this will be in some monetary term, usually dollars. So your cost variance will be expressed in the number of dollars. And in a similar way, the schedule variance is the difference between earned value and planned cost. So positive variances are good because what they mean is, is that your project will underspend and will come in ahead of schedule or early, if you will. Whereas negative variances, 
are bad. They show that if you carry on doing what you're doing, you're going to end up overspending, blowing the budget, if you will, and coming in behind the schedule. In other words, you'll deliver your project late. So do remember this simple little picture here, and I strongly recommend you draw this on a scrap of paper first thing within the exam, label this as earned value, and you don't have to draw a little Superman here, but at the very least, make it clear this is your frame of reference. So showing that same diagram again, and reminding you this is cost variance and schedule variance, let's start with the formulas. And here's my first memory trick. Notice that when it comes to the variances, that's cost variance, and schedule variance, they always start with earned value. So the first thing you do when calculating it, you put equals earned value, equals earned value. Now the next is fairly simple. On the cost variance, you'd want to subtract from it the actual costs. So cost variance goes with actual cost, whereas schedule variance, it's earned value minus planned value. So there's the first trick. The two variances start with earned value and they subtract, in this case, actual cost and in this case, planned value. Let me just plug in a few numbers here that I've grabbed out of the air, and you can see how easy that would come out. In an example question, you'd be given these numbers from the question itself. So let's suppose here that earned value is given as 866. You may assume that's dollars if you wish. Remember that both start with earned value, hence it's repeated here, and you should subtract the planned value in this case, given in the question as 1300, and the actual cost in this case, given in the question as 1000 giving you the result here. Like I said in the previous slide, positive numbers are good. So because this is negative, what it says in plain terms is that you failed to carry out $434 worth of work, and this is negative, so it means it's over budget. In other words, you're going to overspend if you carry on doing what you're doing. Then onto these indices or ratios. Again, they all start with earned value. Look how easy the formulas are. Let's start with forecasting costs using the cost performance index or CPI. They all start with earned value and you divide them with what? Well, it's the same as the variances. In this case, since it's cost, you divide by actual cost. Guess what? The schedule performance index or SPI is earned value again. Remember, they all start with earned value, this time divided by planned value. Plugging some simple numbers in yet again, here's what we get. Using the same as before, the cost performance index will give you 0.86. And in this case, because it's less than one, you're gonna come in over budget. And here, SPI is 0.66, again less than one, so the project's gonna come in late. As you might imagine, if you've got a value of one in either of these, it means you're on budget and on time. And if it's greater than one in terms of costs, you're gonna underspend. And if it's greater than one in terms of schedule, you're gonna come in early. So next up, I want to talk about estimate at completion. And there are two assumptions that you may need to consider when you need to calculate estimate cost at completion, or EAC. The first is, if you assume, and by the way, the question will state this, from this point onwards, that everything will go to plan. So the current cost variance, CV if you remember, will remain constant until the project end. It won't get any worse. You fix whatever the variance was, and you're gonna run with that until the end of the project. It's simply your budget at completion, minus CV. The second assumption you may need to make is that if you assume from this point onwards that the project will continue with the same average efficiency, in other words, CPI will continue, and in which case now it's the final cost is the budgeted cost divided by CPI. So just be aware of that estimated cost at completion. It depends which of these situations the question is posing. Now, the estimated completion date, what do we do about that? Well, here's what you'll normally expect to see during the exam. However, I will give you a second option just to get you ahead of the pack. If you assume from this point on that all remaining work will have the same value of scheduled performance index, and by the way, this will only give the correct result if the planned end date has not really been exceeded, in which case your final project duration is your planned project duration divided by SPI. SPI will give you earned value divided by planned value. And this is normally what you'll get for the exam. In other words, just like when you worked out your final budget, you merely divided by the cost performance index. Here, you divide by the schedule performance index to find out how long the project will take. The other option that you may need to know is that if you assume from this point onwards that all future work will be on plan, but SV uses money units, so we can extrapolate the graph as shown. Here's actual cost, plan cost, and earned value. I've used this from a previous example where I used the creation of green pencils. 
I can extrapolate earned value. And here I can see the end date from the original date here. And that's the slippage. In formula, the estimated completion date is the current plan date plus the slippage. However, as I said for the exam, you'll normally only need to use this formula here. So let me now bring that together in a nice sequence for you. Step one, budget at completion, BAC, usually given in the question. The budget at completion is the project budget or total planned cost. Typical in most questions, it will be posed at some point during the project. So you need to calculate where you are at the moment and use that to forecast the future. Step one, the budget at completion. Step two, the earned value often given and sometimes it's calculated. And what I mean by that is, if they give it to you, you can just plug it straight into the formulas. But sometimes, these three variances of the same formula can be helpful. Remember this, earned value equals the actual percentage complete times the budget at completion. So if your project's going to cost $1,000 and you're 50% complete, your earned value is $500. If you just throw that formula around and translate it, you'll get budget at completion is EV divided by percentage complete and percentage complete equals EV divided by BAC. So keep a clear head. Step three, you will then in the question want to calculate first your cost variance, then your schedule variance or vice versa. And then and only then work out your cost performance index and your schedule performance index. Bringing us to step four, you need to calculate your estimate at completion. And the simpler one is simply your budget at completion divided by CPI. Step five, estimate to completion from this point is your budget at completion minus what your actual cost is. Step six, your variance at completion is BAC minus EAC. Now, when it comes to schedule performance index and cost performance index, very often you'll need to know about trends. And they're often plotted over time in order to show this. Here's a short portion of a project showing a handful or so of weeks. And here's your SPI value. And you can see that if you plot it, at, say, at the end of each week, you'll find it'll usually vary over time, as will the cost performance index. So if you're partway through a project, you might need to consider the performance over time. And here's why. Well, one example would be that the products that you're creating, the work, and the approach you're using to create the products are different for each stage. So it would be quite normal and natural that SPI and CPI would vary throughout the project. Second, it might be that some products may be similar to previous developments, meaning that the team can carry them out in a much more efficient and effective way. Some work package dynamics can vary considerably. Different areas of risk, levels of certainty of estimates, any snags, issues, problems, and so forth. The levels of critical thinking can vary within the team and for different products. And finally, the team effectivity and efficiency varies over time. These last two are no criticism of the team themselves, just a natural human condition. So it would make sense to be able to calculate SPI and CPI trends, which brings me to the next two formula. The first is called cumulative CPI. Remember, this is just CPI over a period of time, and it's often referred to as CPI uppercase C. It's just the sum of all the earned values divided by the sum of the actual costs. And mathematically, that would look like this. CPI cumulative equals the sum of all the EVs divided by the sum of all the ACs. And here I've shown a small, simple example. Over a period of 20 weeks, looking at week periods here, here's what the earned value was recorded and the actual cost. And here I've given you the ratio of CPI, EV divided by AC, in this case, 1.06. I've done it for all four of them. And what I've now done is to add them up here. There's two ways of doing this. What we want to do is sum all of these numbers here. And trust me, it comes to $685,000. Sum all the ACs up. This comes to $776,000. And divide the cumulative earned value by the cumulative actual cost. This gives you 0.88. And yes, you could have done it by adding up all of the CPIs and finding the average. In this case, it's four of them. So dividing by four, you'd get the same number. The reason being is that taking an average over time develops most likely metrics rather than taking a short, say, four week period within a project where CPI is going very well and SPI isn't. And it might change within the next month. In a similar way, we need to look at TCPI for cost and TCPI for schedule. Now, pay attention to this last one, since as the title suggests, there's two ways you could calculate this. 
So first, the two complete performance index, that's TCPI, forecasts the performance needed to achieve either the financial budget at completion, BAC, or the schedule, which is your estimate at completion, EAC. And this is the reason why there are two methods and two formula for each. So step two, a number greater than one means the future efficiency will need to be greater than planned. Conversely, a figure less than one means future efficiency may be less than planned. Very similar to the ratios we looked at earlier. If TCPI is greater than the current CPI, then future efficiency must improve if the project is to achieve the budget at completion or estimate at completion. And four, to calculate the future cost performance index required to meet the planned budget, you've got two ways here. TCPIC, the formula here is BAC minus DV over the remaining funds. There's only one formula here, but what BAC is depends on these two particular circumstances. If you're targeting the original budget, then BAC in this case is BAC minus AC. And if you're targeting the current forecast, it's EAC minus AC. So now you hop on over to my website and download your free handbook that accompanies this short video. My name's Dave Litton. It's been a pleasure working with you on this short video, and I hope that you and I will meet again on my website. Bye for now.